name is Sumunta Keofilavong. I'm the co-founder of Unovergard, which is a platform for personalized fashion. So we want to change the way fashion is being made and is being sold. Uh, I lost my underwear on the street one day. <laughs> I did. I just had, I gained like 75 pounds because I had twins. Uh, so I'm a short person. Right, so again, so can you imagine, like I was as round as I was high. Um, so eventually my first uh, outing with my girlfriends, I was wearing those pants and I was running on the street and the elastic band went away. And I say, I deserve more than this. <laughs> I deserve fashion that is not treating me like shit. Sorry. Most clothing, hit the trash after only seven times being worn. Donated um, clothing, you think like, okay, I'm doing a good cause here, but they are going straight to Len, Len Miles, right? We are very lucky that we were able to meet directly our customers through different pop-ups events in New York City. It became very clear um, that it's very difficult for women to get dressed the way they want. Um, and um, they're wasting so much time browsing online, returning things that they don't fit. Um, so that for me it was clear that this disconnect has to change. There must be like a thousands and thousands of items out there that can be reused, restyled, transformed. So I was born in Laos uh, and I grew up in France um, near Paris. My story as an immigrant and refugee, like I just recently told someone I didn't have papers until I was 14. And people were like, what? But no, like you're French. And I said, yes. Or like, they said, no, you're not a refugee. You're an economic migrant. And I'm like, yes, in America, I'm an economic migrant. But in France, I was a refugee and I had no papers. And if I don't say that story, people can't connect, you know, they, it feels like because they have a certain view of me and it doesn't fit like this whole like French in fashion, startup, but I think it's important that I say it. An mm -hmm. untold story, it's a waste. And I'm like, as you know, have noticed, I hate waste. Mm -hmm. I hate waste of opportunity. I had waste of potential. And a story can unleash so much potential outside of yourself, you know? It's like a lot of time when you let other people tell your story, it's become simplified uh, it, to fit a box, to fit a headline, to fit you know, a category. I want to be able to tell the story that we don't all have to go to Harvard to have a successful startup. So I think for me it was a learning curve for the startup saying um, it starts somewhere but it's okay, it doesn't have to stay there. You know, there is no business plan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people want to tell you, if I, yeah, okay, there's a business plan, but not really, there is no business plan. And it has to change. And I thought that was one of the biggest lessons. And it's okay, in fact, that it's changed, it needs to. The second um, point is, uh, was very hard, is accountability. Because the more people you have involved, the more accountability lines you have, like investors, shareholders, staff. My accountability is to customers. That's it. And if you're not happy about this, then tough luck. Do not apologize <laughs> for who you are, like for what you want. I think more women especially tend to apologize before even talking. That's the first word they say, sorry, for what, you know? Like, and the problem is like, um, it took me 45 years to get it, to get there. Because we, I don't know, there's this kind of like, notion that you, you're not supposed to be here. You know, I think, and then it's even make more difficult when you're a woman of color. It's like adding up, so I think like, do not apologize. At least, not if you have not done anything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> you don't apologize to be there. You have the right to be there. You know, yeah.
The Venture Out uh, came about, I think it was two years ago. My business partner, um, she's based in Geneva. She knew um, someone, an Italian, like all Italians, like they know each other everywhere in the world, um, <laughs> knew Brian and basically suggested that we should come for like a workshop on retail innovation. So I signed up for one of the workshops. I think it was like, I can't remember, three or four days. Very intense, very intense. It was good. It was a um, um, very uh, self-reflective moment for us as a company. I pitched for the first time in front of potential investors. Yes, so last week we launched uh, in New York City um, a service where our customers will be able to get um, styling services at home, um, but also get like made to order um, pieces just for the silhouette and fit. So no more sizes like 14A, whatever it means, uh, but your true fit. Um, I, we get in there with a stylist and a fashion and construction design a specialist. Um, so therefore we can offer this mature order service, but also alteration and transformation of the existing um, items in their wardrobe. Um, we also uh, bring some styles that we have previously curated for them. Um, therefore we are sure that basically all the styles we bring to them will fit with their existing wardrobe, so no more waste, like or you know, clothes that hit the garbage before even being worn. Um, so it's personal shopping, um, styling, uh, made to order, tailoring, uh, and alteration. 